Hi. No, seriously, hey. Uh, I'm Craig Teichner. Um I, uh, I was not able to embark upon much of a book tour to commemorate and promote the release of my new book, Cradle Book, uh, published by Boa Editions uh, this, uh, just in May, uh, with extraordinary cover art by poet Mattia Harvey. Um, and the really exciting thing about this cow that you see here is the cow is actually like this big. Um, Mattia Harvey has been taking these extraordinary photographs of miniatures for the last while, and this is one of them. It's a very small cow, and it looks big. Anyway, I was not able to really leave my uh, general surroundings for a book tour, and so I thought instead um, I would just uh, tour the internet. Um, so I'm just going to read uh, a few of the fables from this book, and, um, you know, if you want to listen, you can keep playing the video, and if you don't, you can just stop, and I won't even know, because I don't know what you're doing. Um, it's the internet, it's very private. Uh, anyway, so, uh, I'll just start. Um, uh, yeah, so Cradle Book is a collection of fables. Um, I sort of looked back at a lot of other fables and thought, how could I do this myself? Um, I always wanted to be a fiction writer, but just don't have the patience for it. Um, so I thought I could just uh, write these little one or two page stories and get my fix that way. So uh, here's the first one in the book. Uh, it's called The Groaning Cows. And this will be like a real reading where there really won't be much to look at. Uh, it'll just be me looking down at the book and then making eye contact with you via the web. Um, so, you know, and feel free to go grab a beer or have some, you know, you could put a wine and cheese platter out on your desk or go to a wine and cheese store and watch this on your iPhone. Do whatever you want to do. I mean, I, I, again, I don't know. Uh, so, here goes. This is called The Groaning Cows. One night, as if responding to some invisible signal, all the cows began groaning. They groaned and groaned all the next day and did not stop at nightfall. The children were becoming more and more afraid. Nearly driven mad, everyone in town gathered in the meeting hall. Were the cows sick? Was it a warning? Of what? What should they do? No one could agree. Someone suggested that perhaps there was something wrong with the grass, and the cows were groaning because their stomachs ached. But this did not seem likely, as the other animals ate the same grass, and none of them were groaning. Someone else wondered whether the cows had finally tired of their servitude. Perhaps their groaning was a cry for freedom. But no one else was willing to believe that cows had such ideas. No one could think of a good explanation, and no one could think what to do, so they agreed to meet again in one week's time. Still, the cows continued to groan, night and day, while the farmers milked them, while they were being led out to pasture, when it was dark outside and they should have slept. Their voices never tired of groaning. After a week had passed, and the town gathered again, and the mayor said that something must be done, he determined that all the cows in town must be slaughtered. Then. He would go to the next town and buy more cows with the money set aside for the harvest festival, which they would have to do without this year. Since no one could think of a better idea, the people of the town agreed. That night, all the men met in the square. They brought with them every tool of violence they had, scythes and clubs, knives and picks and rakes, so no one would be without a weapon. Then, holding torches, the mob made its way to the first farm. They would all kill the cows together. As they reached the place where the groaning cows were standing, the cows seemed to take no notice of their approach. Despite the glint of the torches on the blades the men carried, in truth, the men were nervous, still unsure whether they were truly taking the best course. 
but the mayor was among them, and he urged them on. They raised their weapons and prepared to strike. Just then, a girl ran into their path and stood between the men and the cows. She was the weaver's daughter, a quiet girl who kept rabbits and loved to make up songs. Stop, she cried. You must not kill these cows, or else terrible luck will befall us all. Then she put her hand on the soft muzzle of the nearest cow. To her surprise, and to the surprise of everyone there, as she touched it, the cow stopped groaning. Soon all of the cows were quiet, and precious silence filled the night. Everyone went home and slept for what seemed like the first time in their lives. The next night, just as the sun finally set, all the pigs began groaning. They groaned and groaned and would not stop. The poor weaver's daughter. She knew then, when she heard the groaning, that her life would never be her own. It would belong to the pigs and the cows, to the goats and the ducks, to the hens and the rabbits. Most of all, it would belong to the men whom she knew would never live.